So I'm someone who obviously owns a lot of arcade one-up machines. I've pretty much been there since day one with the Street Fighter 2 cabinet. That was just a dream come true to be able to play Street Fighter 2 in the comfort of my own home with an arcade-like machine. Of course, over the years, there's been changes. There's been upgrades, downgrades to these systems. But of course, now the main point of contingency with a lot of people is the price of these systems because what used to be a three dollars to $400 purchase is now a six dollars to $700 purchase. I just recently picked up this Simpsons arcade one-up cabinet now you might remember a couple days ago on the channel I talked about the X-Men one and I was definitely a bit disappointed with that system but I was hopeful that the Simpsons would sort of reinvigorate my joy with arcade one-up and I can honestly say it didn't if anything it's making me do a buyer beware sort of thing because there's some big problems that definitely need to be addressed with this cabinet and what should have been an easy home run is something that I find myself just not falling in love with now to start things off, let's talk about the design of the system itself. And once again, much like the X-Men cabinet, it does look great. It looks like the original Simpsons arcade game was. Of course, it has that weird light blue color to it. The side art on it is really well done. It has all of the Simpsons characters that are featured in the game, including Snowball number two. I definitely like the artwork on it. It's got Matt Groening's signature on it as well. And of course, moving on to the light up marquee. It looks pretty good. I don't think it looks nearly as good as the X-Men one does. If you look, I'll sort of do a close up here. There's like some weird stuff going on, like some, some black stuff. And I don't know if that's supposed to give it like a rustic look or something like that, but it just look, kind of looks half assed to me. I don't know if that's the intended look or whatever, but it is what it is. The control panel itself looks nice. Now notice I said looks nice because we'll talk about the controls themselves in just a minute. But once again, it, you know, everything looks good on it. It has all the Simpsons characters characters that you'll be playing as and of course it has that ball in the middle for Simpsons bowling which we'll talk about when we get into it now once again this does have the coin door on it much like the X-Men arcade cabinet did which I'm still not a huge fan of like they're, they're okay you know but this one is all black whereas the X-Men one was black but the um the actual coin slots were like red on them so it actually looked like an arcade thing I, I don't really know what they were going for with this there's no other sort of artwork on here of course it does come with a stool that I didn't assemble because I just keep them on the floor. It also came with a riser that, once again, I, I didn't need the stupid riser. I don't need anything like that. But it did come with one other thing, and that's this tin sign that I actually really like this because I've been putting up posters for all of my arcade one-up cabinets. I got a few more coming in, but I'll show you guys what I've got so far. So this is kind of nice because it circumvents the need for a poster. I think putting something above the cabinet is a really sleek and cool look. So I do appreciate that. I actually wasn't expecting expecting that I, I didn't really read the product description or anything like that but overall the aesthetic of it is definitely nice it definitely captures the Simpsons vibe which I can appreciate but of course none of that really matters unless the games play well and sound good and look good right I mean right that's why you buy these things to actually play the games not just have them sit there and collect dust in the background and unfortunately that's where things get a bit out of control with this system that's where the problems really start showing their face and while they're not like end of the world problems when you add them all up it definitely leaves a very sour taste in my mouth Alrighty, so here is our Simpsons Arcade 1-Up. We have, of course, the original Simpsons game and Simpsons Bowling, which utilizes the ball on this machine. Now, of course, it does have online for leaderboards. And for the original Simpsons game, you can also play that online as well. No online for bowling, though, which is kind of weird because I think bowling is a really good game. So I would have liked to have seen that. Now, you of course have your settings where you can adjust things like the lives, the difficulty, scan lines if you want, stuff like that. That's cool, I'm not really big on that. But let's just hop into the Simpsons game and I'm gonna show you guys, you know, what, what? Oh, I hit the wrong button. I'm gonna show you guys sort of, you know, where some of the issues lie with this. Now, here's the iconic intro to the game and this is problem number one is that it's it's not in sync and you won't really notice it until a certain point and i will point that out in just a second might introduce a little more volume hopefully this comes across good and it's right after homer and we have uh lisa playing the saxophone playing the saxophone with no audio see right there the saxophone riff that you're hearing is supposed to happen before it and that causes this to glitch because that ends up rushing through and it might seem like a minor thing but 
it's like there should be you know top-notch quality control with this so the fact that lisa's saxophone the audio doesn't kick in until after the fact it actually causes a glitch in the audio for the full intro because it rushes through marge's thing it's it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's definitely noticeable and, and really weird. So as far as playing the game is concerned, of course, if you want to play as a certain character, you have to play within a certain um, control scheme. So there's one for Marge, one for Homer, one for Bart, and one for Lisa. That's where we have another problem with this machine. And that is, if you play as anyone beyond Marge, you're gonna hit your hand on the control stick because of the way that the system was designed. Now, I'll show some B-roll right now of me playing the game with my hands, but basically what ends up happening is the control stick, because of the way the buttons are laid out and the buttons being so far above, the control stick constantly hits your thumb. And it's like, who thought this was a good idea? There, there's really no sort of rhyme or reason for this. Obviously, the ball might be taking up some space on it, but it, 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 it hits your thumb like all the time. And my hands are small. Like, I don't have giant hands like a lot of people do. My hands are small, I know, but they are not yours. They are my own. They are not yours. They are my own. And shout out to Jewel. But yeah, like, it's just weird and then of course we have just the general audio let's listen to it let's turn it all the way up and listen to it together I'm sorry, but that sounds absolutely terrible. There's no bass whatsoever. It sounds so tinny and hollow, and there's tons of cracking. I'm not probably not gonna get much of the cracking on here because I'm trying to talk and play the game together, but you hear it all the time, and it's just like, how do we screw this up? It's The Simpsons, it's the marquee title. Like, yeah, it's still fun. It still looks really good and it plays pretty decent as well. I, I, don't, I haven't really had any sort of issues with the playability of the game, except for the fact that my thumb is constantly getting hit by the control nub and it's like, how did we how do we not realize this there's tons of space on the actual machine itself so why did we not realize this in q a that hey this is hitting your thumb especially when you have to move to the right which you have to do because it's a side scrolling game it's just so annoying to deal with and the more you play it the more your thumb gets hit you could try to like adjust your hand and really there's no sort of way to avoid getting hit by it so between the audio in this game being just so tinny and horrible and my hand constantly getting hit with the control stick it's like wow this was seven this is what my 700 dollars went to I, i'm just i'm seriously in shock that nobody picked up on this and yes the audio could be potentially fixed in a patch but you, you can't fix the controls you can't fix the big control problem with it constantly hitting your fingers so it's definitely a massive oversight and something that it's unfortunate because there's, there's no way to fix it unless you just redo the whole top of the board all right now let's check out simpsons bowling because this is a game that I feel like a lot of people have never played it. You know, I have never played this game before. So it was something I was actually interested in checking out. You can see that there's a couple different types of game modes here. Here are the characters. All are fully voiced, which is actually kind of impressive. I'm a big Mr. Burns fan. Like, I love him as a human being. I think he's just fantastic because he's just such a scumbag. But, you know, I model myself after him to some degree, I guess. But yeah, like, this game is actually super fun. The audio in this game is actually better balanced. I wouldn't say it's necessarily better than what we had with uh, the Simpsons game, but it definitely sounds a bit better. Lots of voice acting in the game as well, and it's very easy to control. You actually use the slider thing, the little ball thing, for everything. So to set your curve, all that sort of stuff to position your player. You can see that Monty likes to go to the side here. So we'll try to line it up nice and good. My hand is not in a great position to go straight. So we're gonna we're gonna give this a college try here. Okay, that didn't go too bad. But yeah, like, this is actually super fun. And it's like, I wish 
that this had online play. Now, I think this is a great sort of game where if you have like people over your house and you know, you get a couple different people going, this will be a super fun game. And to me, it's actually better than The Simpsons because the audio is better. The controls are super good. It's very smooth to use this. I love all the voice acting. This is actually the surprise of the cabinet for me. If it had online, maybe I would change my mind a little bit, but as it stands, this game is really good. It plays really good, it sounds really good, but is it enough to sort of wash the taste of the Simpsons original game out of my mouth? Let's talk about it. So overall, what do I think about the Simpsons Arcade 1UP? I'm really honestly disappointed. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world. But when we talk about price point, when we talk about $700, I expect a certain level of quality. And whereas the X-Men machine, I didn't love it, but I liked it, I can't really get beyond just like tolerate it with this machine. And it's because of all the little things that add up. You buy this system to play the marquee game. When the marquee game has audio glitches and just weird sound effects and crackling audio, it definitely takes you out of the experience. What I don't get is, Arcade 1UP has done good speakers before. My Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cabinet, that thing's got some knock in it, there's some bass in it. Same thing with NBA Jam, and it's like, what happened? Are, are we using cheaper parts here? Are we doing something like that? And if that's the case, you need to uh, reflect that in the price point, because both of those things only cost me $400, Whereas this thing cost me $700. Yes, there are cheaper variants out there that don't come with all the bells and whistles, but good luck finding one of those. I will say it's still playable. You know, it's still playable. It's definitely not the best experience because of the controls and because of the audio, but it's still playable. Uh, Simpsons Bowling actually surprised me. I think if that had online, like that would be a huge win, but it doesn't. Only one game on this system has online and that is the original Simpsons game. So just. Overall, I'm definitely disappointed. I'm a huge Simpsons fan. Like, you know how children like go to bed and like you put on like Sesame Street and they fall asleep? That's what Simpsons is to me. I put the Simpsons on every night and that's how I go to sleep because it's just, you know, calming, it's relaxing, it's something familiar. And it's a shame that, you know, this didn't come out of the gate, you know, guns blazing. Obviously it was a bit rushed. Obviously there are issues that can be fixed, but we should expect more. When we're talking about $700, we should expect a lot more quality control. So honestly, I'm done. Like Arcade 1UP, I have no ill will towards you guys, but I'm just done buying the machines unless something like Daytona USA or even House of the Dead comes along. Racing games, you've done racing games, first person shooters or light gun games, you've done that with Big Buck Adventure. Then I'll come back and see what you guys are bringing to the table after I read some reviews, but I just can't buy these systems anymore on day one because the quality control just isn't there anymore. So let me know what you think of this video in the comment section down below. Did you end up snagging one of these? Do you plan on getting one? Are you glad I made this video? Because I mean, I hope you're glad I made this video because you watched it all the way to the end and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button be sure to like and share as well and as always I'll catch you guys on the next one later